when we look at the past we one way we may look at it is just a waste of time i was wasting my human birth before i came to krishna bhakti uh, that we had best if only i could have avoided it if i had come to bhakti in my childhood if i had been born in a devotee's family it would have been it would have been so nice and in one sense that's true however we can't change the past and another more health so this is a good way of looking at past because ultimately we want to attain krishna and every moment that is disconnected from krishna that is distracted from krishna that is just prolonging our existence in this world so that's one good way of looking at the past but another this is definitely better than hankering for the past and thinking maybe my life in the past was better i was happier as enjoying life more which is rarely true but our mind can make us imagine anything however a healthier way to look at the past is to see that our past was a mix of good and bad and that prepared us for coming to krishna so krishna works in our life irrespective of whether we are working toward him or not so for from our perspective our coming to krishna consciousness can seem like a dramatic change in our life so maybe our life was going in one direction and suddenly it starts going in another direction sometimes an, sometimes an entirely opposite direction uh, while that is true from our perspective and it's important to recognize that perspective but from krishna's perspective actually he was always acting in our life so even when we are going somewhere off track krishna was still in our hearts ishvara sarva bhutanam hrudeshe arjuna tishthati brahmayan sarva bhutani yantra rudhani mayaya krishna says i am guiding the wanderings of all living beings and it doesn't say at this time bhaktanam he says sarva bhutanam all living beings i am i am direct i am uh guiding their wanderings so that means krishna is acting in our lives whether we are turning toward him or turning away from him so one aspect of a krishna conscious vision one way we say that sorry so one way a krishna conscious look at the past we can say um we may say the i was just wasting my time in the past which is one way of looking at it but how was krishna acting in my life when i was unaware of him when i was forgetful of him because he was acting even then and understanding this actually can help us spiritualize our vision uh, of our past and it is not just a uh ideal look idol, idol look at the past it is it is if we are going to look at everything through krishna conscious perspective a devotee tries to see uh, every everything as related with krishna so even when we come to when we see when we interact with people who are not yet familiar with krishna consciousness so those who are not kc those who are not yet krishna conscious we see what spiritual potential they have so why not then why not see what spiritual potential our pre kc self had before we came to krishna conscious what was what was our consciousness what was our nature so to see everything in krishna consciousness means to even look at our past from a krishna conscious perspective now dhruv maharaj does say and i approach the lord for such a petty desire but that is his realization and that 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 is an appreciation in one sense if you want to put it this way that dhruv maharaj's expression is a is a declaration of how extraordinary the higher taste of beholding krishna and loving krishna is so while he laments about his past the lord does not undermine or dismiss his past the lord tells him go back to your kingdom and rule the kingdom and when he goes back to the kingdom he is not dismissive towards his relatives he is not dismissive to any of them so in that sense we can see this uh can say something like 
Dhruv Maharaj, look at the past. It is not a condemnation of the past, of his past. And his past, of course, was exalted. He was born in an ex exalted family. He had a very devoted mother. But of even his past motives, but a proclamation of the glory of the higher taste. So sometimes what happens is we take contextual statements and we absolutize them. Then what happens is we think, oh, everything in my past was simply a waste. Well, not entirely. Mm -hmm. So another reason, one reason why we can we need to look at our past is because if we are Krishna conscious about everything, why not have a Krishna, if we want to see Krishna everywhere, see Krishna in our past also. But another important reason is we are informed by the past. By informed means the word information nowadays refers only to data. But inform. So inform means we are formed internally. So our inner world is formed by our past and we bring that into a Krishna consciousness. And here Dhru Maharaj is lamenting the fact that he had unworthy desires from the past. And yes, that, that is something which uh, at one level is not the highest motive to approach Krishna. Of course, Krishna says even such people are Sukritina, those who approach him for, for wealth. They are also pious people. They are good souls, Krishna says in 7.16 in the Bhagavad Gita. But still, that is not the highest desire. So we can say that, okay, we also came. Maybe we came only for Prasad. We came because we were just frustrated with life. You know, in Kaliuga, Krishna talks about four categories of people who come to him. In Kaliuga, there are also four categories of people who come to Krishna. And those four categories are those who are distressed, those who are distressed, those who are distressed, and those who are distressed. <laughs> Everybody is distressed in some way or the other. Maybe some relationship problem, maybe some financial break breakdown, maybe some psychological meltdown, whatever it is. Maybe some existential emptiness, but they're distressed. So we come because of whatever reason. We may come for relief from distress. But what happens is, we may say, okay, I had those desires and I abandoned those desires now. So my past doesn't have any bearing on me. But actually our past didn't just give us those desires that we abandoned. You know, our past also gave us our attitudes, our worldview, our values. And those don't change so quickly. Mm -hmm. So with respect to say attitudes, because some people by, by nature are more optimistic. Some people are more pessimistic. And that's how they will be. It's not that that is going to change magically because they come to come to bhakti. Just like we know there are four varanas in the Vedic, Vedic standard. And it is not that just because the Kshatriya comes to bhakti, the Kshatriya will suddenly become a Brahmana. So we could say our values in terms of our core values of our psychophysical nature, they remain the same. So understanding where we are we have come from helps us understand what we are carrying. Now, what we are carrying is not just a burden that we have to give up. So, <clears throat> so we can say, when we say we informed by a past, what we are carrying from our past, it's at one level, if you can say it's not just a burden we need to shed. Yes, that's there. So, for example, impure desires. But it's also our resource for moving ahead toward Krishna. Our past is pro past has made us who we are. So our interests, abilities, <clears throat> we could say even nature, psychophysical natures, those are our resources by which we are moving toward Krishna. And in that sense, uh, it is not just a burden we, we have to abandon. It's our resource. So understanding what resources we have, uh, that's very important for us to move ahead in our life. So at some level, we easily understand it. Say if some new person comes in and then we ask, what do you do? We understand what their abilities are. And then we may engage them in service accordingly. But that's at a, at a gross level. 
but at a deeper level say some people are more of a introvert nature some people are of extrovert nature and then understanding that is important to decide what kind of services they can do the best so it is for guiding others it is also for guiding ourselves because in general when we are introduced initially we are just told to surrender and obey and we do whatever services we are told to do and that's important to learn as a matter of submission and discipline but over a period of time if we are to serve krishna sustainably then we have to understand our nature and we can best serve accordingly so what we are carrying from our past is not is also our resource for moving toward the future and that's why understanding looking at our past in a holistic way is important 